Okay, so I'm about to put together this 650 unit. I'm going to try and make a few videos of me assembling it as if you had machine work done, let's say by me, um, and then you're just going to put it back together yourself. So uh, in theory, this crank is ready to be installed. It's got the rods torqued, well, stretched. I use ARP rod bolts and I use their stretch gauge to properly tighten the rod bolts down. I'll probably do another video like that again, but I did it recently, so I just skipped that on this one. You would receive the crank back, ready to go, and get your cases all prepped. New bearings. Bushings don't have to be changed that often. Um, I get questions about that a lot. Those don't really wear out that quickly, um, as long as everything in your engine is working properly there shouldn't be any reason why those would get worn you know unless it was like excessive mileage or abuse uh, new lay shaft bearing new main shaft bearing so everything is ready to be assembled if you're trying to do this without spending thousands of dollars there are certain parts that you know you have to send out like crank work or cylinder work or head work um, spend your money where it counts, get those things done, get them done right, and then with just a little bit of effort, you can definitely handle the rest. I like to overdo it with the assembly lube. There's nothing wrong with that. It's definitely worth it. I like to assemble on the primary side. I don't remember what the manual tells you to do, but this is just how I like to do it. I like to take it so the webs are protecting the rods mostly, and then just kind of carefully set it down in. And that two-piece bearing can kind of be tricky, so you want to wobble it around a little bit until it kind of finds its way there. Okay, so now that that's seated, I like to put the cans in next. And then I'll put it on my sealant so that way I'm not like bumping into it and stuff. So take your little breather disc and your spring and drop those down in. Again, lots and lots of assembly lube. You can never have too much. Make sure that spring seats down in there. It doesn't get caught in those tangs. So then you're gonna take your intake cam and again make sure it's all cleaned up everything looks good on it these aren't really worn at all they're actually really nice so um, no need to replace them if they don't have any like flat spots or scoring or grooves or anything and then the next thing you want to just find those little dog ears there and you know you've got them when the spring is kind of doing its job so you can tell it's bouncing up and down. That means you're lined up, which is awesome. Take your exhaust cam. Same deal, make sure everything's looped up. Spins freely. Then I'll also put a little bit around on this side because it's easier for it to just stay on the cam than to try and get that other bushing moved up. Blue Hylamar, get it from Dan at Friends and Grub, some good stuff. He's got all your Hylamar needs. Doesn't take a crazy amount either. Once you get all this on and everything's torqued down and it squeezes out, acetone is probably the best way to kind of clean it all up. But once this all squeezes out, you just have a nice thin blue line. Scrub it all back off and it looks really nice. I love this stuff. 
I have yet to have an engine that leaks, uh, knock on wood, but the stuff's pretty good, so. Use whatever you like. I know I used to use um, 1211 3 bond, and it worked pretty good too, but I just like this stuff more. While you're letting that tack up, put your stud back in. You probably wouldn't remove it. I just do to make it easier while I'm rolling it around in my blasters and stuff. This thing can get in the way, so. I. Uh, I pull this and pretty much all the other stuff just to make my life easier. Crank's in, both cams are in. Breather is operating properly. So now we can drop the other side on. There's not much going on there. Again, maybe just throw some lube in your bearing. Can never have too much. Make sure your rods are clear. So now you're kind of working against four different deals that all need to be kind of lined up at the same time. So it takes a little bit of rocking. And every once in a while you do have to get out your little baby hammer and do some tapping just to kind of get things started. Make sure it's the little guy. You don't want to do anything crazy. crazy you don't want to get carried away that timing side rides pretty tight and so which is a good thing but that's usually the side I think in the manual it tells you to put that side together first but I don't like fighting with the intake breather and all that so this is easier for me this is the way I prefer but every once in a while you just have to love taps nothing crazy but it's seated now we can start putting in our hardware and kind of sucking everything together and the whole time you know make sure you feel everything's still free everything still turns that's what you want no binding on to the next 